This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review. What I'm looking at is 2016's Ouija, Origin of Evil, which is a sequel to 2014's Ouija. And this is fascinating to me because 2014's Ouija was such a meh movie. It wasn't even terrible because terrible takes ambition. It takes drive. This movie was just so mediocre and dull that its sequel directed by Mike Flanagan, by the way, who's also doing the upcoming Warner Brothers movie, Dr. Sleep, the sequel to The Shining. By comparison, Ouija Origin of Evil is Kubrick. It's that good in comparison to the first movie. But then again, that's not a typically difficult task because, as I said, the first movie was just so bland and not very interesting. Mike Flanagan's sequel is very much in the vein of his Netflix series, The Haunting of Hill House, if you've seen that. It almost plays as a prequel to Hill House in terms of the way the ghosts interact with people and so on and so forth. It's a pretty interesting movie, though it's not perfect. Its greatest shortcoming in my eyes is that the buildup to the supernatural chaos is a little clunky and I'm not quite sure why it is. It could be due to the editing or it perhaps could be due to, I don't know, the editing was just kind of odd to me. That's the only thing that really comes to mind. The editing just feels very choppy up to a point. Now when things get weird it picks up speed and it just works. But prior to that when Flanagan is building up the people who we're concerned about it feels just not slightly off. It's not bad, but again, not as naturalistic as it perhaps could be. It takes place in the 1950s with this family, a mom and two daughters. The father isn't there, and you learn why later in the movie. They're spiritualists, so essentially they speak to the dead. It's a scam, and they know it's a scam, but the mother treats it as if it were therapeutic to the people whose money she takes. And there's a logic to that, by the way, in the sense that she is providing a service and comfort to people whose loved ones have passed on. The thing is, she doesn't believe any of it, and that comes to be the undoing of the family and her, eventually. And it's really clever how this works. As I said, the family dynamics part of the movie is a little clunky, but once things get moving, it works really well. It's a surprisingly effective movie. It's well shot. Flanagan's a great director for this type of thing. And as I mentioned earlier, this feels like a prequel to The Haunting of Hill House. Except, though, it's more perhaps jump scary than it needs to be. And the subtlety that Flanagan used to great effect in Hill House is not really on display here. And I keep going back to Hill House because you can see some of the things that appear in Hill House were first executed in this film, which came prior. What Mike Flanagan as a director does a lot is that he'll have the foreground appear normal while in the background, slightly out of focus, there are odd, weird things happening. And I actually think it's overdone in Ouija, The Origin of Evil to some extent. It's not exactly subtle and it actually becomes less effective the more you do it. As I said, in Hill House it employs similar techniques but once again they're subtle. They don't tend to be as in your face as they happen to be in Ouija Haunting of Evil. But that aside, that's a stylistic thing. On the whole it's a pretty good movie. It's strong, it's eerie, it tries to build atmosphere, not always successfully, but it does try. And compared to the original, it's a masterwork. So if you haven't seen Ouija Origin of Evil, check it out. Well worth your time. This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review. Peace.